it's a total honor to be here again at Sonar, Sonar D. It's a fantastic place, really inspiring. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be doing a deconstruction, and I'll talk in a bit about what a deconstruction is. First of all, I just want to talk about why I chose this track. A um, couple of reasons, really. Firstly, DJ Shadow's playing here at the festival, uh, and he's also going to be here uh, tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon doing a talk as well. Um, and also, I've recently been getting into this fantastic podcast called Song Exploder. I don't know if anyone knows about it. Um, it's, uh, I'm not affiliated with it any way. It's just uh, fantastic. It's run by a guy called uh, Rishikesh Hirwe uh, from LA. And what he does is he gets artists to come in and just break down tracks, talk about how, they, how they're put together. And they also, he gets them to bring in some of the stems as well, so you can kind of hear the parts um, solo. Uh, so yeah, this came out in December. I checked it out and I thought it's fantastic. And we've actually been using it in our classes. One of our modules at Point Blank Music School, Creative Production Remix, we've been playing it and talking about how it's put together. So if you get a chance, please check it out. But I think the first thing we should do is just remind ourselves of the track. If you've never heard it, we'll have a listen to it. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So here we go. This is Mutual Slump uh, by DJ Shadow. We'll, we'll leave it there for the moment. Um, gives you an idea of uh, what it sounds like. So let's just uh, do a few facts of the tracks and fun facts. I don't know if they're that fun, but uh, let's try and make them fun. Um, so it's produced by DJ Shadow, uh, aka Josh Davis, and it's from his first album, Introducing. That's his first album. It's a great, I mean, a seminal album. It came out uh, nearly 20 years ago on September the 16th, 1996. And it came out on Mowax Recordings, which is James Lavelle's label. Um, I was around at the time. I was involved with Talking Loud, Talking Loud Records. And uh, there was a great night called uh, That's How It Is in London, Shaftesbury Avenue. Uh, and Giles Peterson and James Lavelle used to DJ together. So it was a very exciting time. It was recorded uh, at Dan the Automator's studio uh, in LA, the Glue Factory. They were good friends. Danny Automator went on to do loads of productions, um, worked on, on the first Gorillaz album. It features some vocals by uh, Josh Davis's then girlfriend, now wife, Lisa Davis, which we'll listen to in a bit. Um, and yeah, I've sort of looking at a few facts, couldn't find that many uh, sales figures, but in 2005, it sold 290,000 copies. I'm sure it sold a lot more now. Um, so yeah, let's just quickly talk about some of the uh, equipment that was used. Um, pretty basic. There was really the main thing was the sampler, the Akai MPC60, which was uh, a very popular sample at the time amongst hip hop artists. What it was, it sort of followed on from the uh, the Rack S1000 and then later the S3000. Uh, allowed you to sample, put things in, and then split them across pads. So it worked like a drum machine. And it was co-developed by Roger Lin, who obviously made the Lin drum machine. So uh, very, very popular. And then also a turntable. So the majority of the album is made up of samples from vinyl. And uh, he was really keen. He'd kind of go around scouring all the record shops in LA, looking for samples. Um, so that, those were the two main pieces of equipment really used. Let's quickly talk about what a deconstruction is. So as, as I said, uh, I work at Point Blank Music School. And we developed this technique for teaching um, or for analyzing music as an educational tool. So we basically take apart the elements of a track to fully understand them. Um, and we can use it to teach music theory uh, and also production techniques as well. 
it's a similar technique when I was learning the keyboards. Uh, I used to try to work out the chords and the structure and that kind of thing. So it's a, you know, that anal analyzing process is uh, really, really important to find out what's going on. We're in electronic music school, so we use well-known electronic tracks uh, to just illustrate various uh, aspects of music composition. So we look at key, scales, chords, bass line structure, as I've mentioned. Uh, it's a really a very immediate and practical process. Uh, and we find that a lot of students are coming to music. They might not have had uh, keyboard lessons or music lessons um, when they grew up, so, and they don't necessarily want to sit down and learn scales. So it's it's very immediate process that we can introduce music theory in a kind of more of a fun way. Um, and I think finally what's really important is we get students to use their ears to apply the theory and techniques to their own music, which is ultimately what it's all about. It's not just about copying someone else's music, but it's actually making your own music. Um, so you can see this is a page from our VLE, Virtual Learning Environment, uh, and it's incorporated, the techniques are incorporated in one of our modules, the Music Composition module, which is now part of our BA ONS degree. So let's just look at the samples now. Um, the first sample I want to introduce is this one by Bjork, and uh, it's possibly maybe. I've actually written it as possible maybe, it's possibly maybe. So let's just listen to that. And this came out from her, her 1995 album, Post. So you can see that's actually the, the main hook of the track. So there's that one. Then there is this one here, which is uh, by a guy called Pew, Rog, Pew Regfeld. The track's called Love, Love, Love. 1969, Swedish artist. And there are two main elements there. There's obviously the beat, and then there's that other section which he, which he uses for the intro. So we'll look at that in a minute. And then the, finally, the third one I want to talk about is this one, which is by Ron Geeson and Roger Waters from Pink Floyd. And the title of this track is More Than Seven Dwarfs in Penis Land. Uh, and it's from the album Music from the Body, which was a 1970s, doc 1970s documentary. There we go. So there are the samples. Um, so let's. What I'm going to do now is try to recreate the track. Uh, obviously, I've mentioned before that he was using uh, an MPC-60. What we've got now is Ableton Live Suite and Push 2. Push 2 is the hardware controller for Ableton. So it allows us to do everything we could do, you could do with MPC-60, MPC but a lot more, because we've effectively got a mixing desk in here as well. And we've got pads and everything. So um, I think, yeah, let's uh, make a start. So first thing we're going to do is just look at the beat here. And I've got this as an audio file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this uh, over to a clip. We're in session view here in Ableton. Um, and if I just double click on that, uh, you can see the waveform there. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is warp it. And uh, when we warp some audio, it analyzes the, the audio file. It picks out the transients, i.e. the peaks, and we can then do, we can manipulate that audio. We can speed it up, slow it down, chop it up. Uh, it's, it's a great tool. So all I need to do is just click on this uh, warp button here, and you can see, well, I hope you can see that it's created these transient markers here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the first one here and just set that to 1.1.1. So that's basically setting that first beat as the start. So if I just play that now. So I don't know if you can see it along the top, we've got some um, bar markers. Now what I want to do is actually try to match up um, this beat with those bar markers. So that involves counting along to the beat. So if I just count along with it now, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So that there is the start of the third bar. So I'm just going to drag that along to the third bar there. And if I play it now, it's playing it a lot faster. It's actually playing it at 120 BPM, which is our current tempo. So as I said before, there are two parts of this beat that we want. We want this beat that happens at the front, and then there's a the second section, which is going to be used for the intro of the track. So because we need uh, two different sections, I'm going to uh, just copy this clip so we have two clips here. 
Now, the first one's going to be the uh, introduction. So what we need to do is just play along a, a little bit with, the, uh, with this audio file and just find where that is. So it starts here. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Right click, set 1.1 here. OK, and this is going to be two bars. So let's find, let's find the um, start of the third bar. Two, three, four, one, two. So here, let's just drag that along there. And if we look down here, we can see that it's given us a tempo uh, of 97.96. So let's just, let's just round it up, call it 98 uh, BPM. Oops, not 889. There we go, 98 BPM. <laughs> OK, and we're going to set the end point as well, so it basically stops uh, at the end of that uh, first two bars. So let's just find that. There we go. And let's play again. Press play again. <laughs> oh, great, so we've got the intro. Um, now let's look at extracting the beat um, from this section. So let's just play that now. Now, if I just play, play that along with a metronome, it's within that two-bar loop. It's actually the beats, the drummer's been very free, and he's, he's kind of going a bit out of time. So um, what would be really useful to do is to actually chop up those kicks and the snares, the various elements of that loop, so we can actually play them on the pads. And that's what Josh Davis did, would have done with his MPC-60. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to set uh, the end point for that first two bars there. There we go. And let's just uh, take the metronome off again. And uh, I'm just going to crop that sample. That means I'm just going to extract just, that, just the two bars that we had there. And now I'm going to use a uh, fantastic technique uh, in Ableton. It's called Slice to MIDI. So I right click on that clip and then select Slice to New MIDI Track. And what it's going to do is it's every, where, where it's uh, found a transient, it's going to actually take that section uh, of, the, of the audio file and put it, split it up and put it onto a pad. So create one slice per transient. Um, I'm going to take this preserve warped timing off, which means it's just going to use the timing of the original sample rather than how we've warped it or how we've sped it up. So I'm going to click on OK. There we go. And if I just hit zero, mute that original audio track, and then click in there. Now, this, what it's done is it's done two things. It's um, created a drum rack here with all the different samples. Um, and it's also created a MIDI file, um, which uh, is, let me just find it here. If I right click on that, there we go. It's created a MIDI file. And if I play it, you'll be able to actually hear the beat, all those slices being played. And you should be able to see it on push as well. It hasn't looped it, so I'm just going to loop that up now. There we go. Now, there's a couple of settings here. Um, the actual attack of the sample I'm going to set to um, 0 milliseconds, and also the release as well, so that when I hit one pad, it plays the full part of that slice. So you can hear now, we've got the kicks, some snares, another snare there. All those elements of the track are now actually put onto the pads. So we can start getting creative with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete those MIDI parts that it's created. And um, I'm going to just actually put this beat in using the step sequencer. So rather than playing it in live, I'm going to put it in using the step sequencer. So there are a couple of kicks we're going to use, this one and this one, um, and a snare, and this snare, uh, and a ride cymbal as well. So let's just start off with. Um, this, this is going to be a uh, two-bar loop. So that's the first kick there. And then we're going to use another kick. Uh, let's put these, these in here. There we go. Let's listen to that now. And you can see as I'm putting them in on push, they're coming up here in the, in the event editor there as well. So let's go for the snare now. So let's put this in, and you'll hear the beat starting to form. 
So there's a missing snare there. There's a slightly different snare. Let's put that in. There are a couple of gaps which we can fill um, with this ride cymbal here. So that's the beat. Now, that, that sounds cool, but it sounds a bit, a bit kind of straight. Um, what we need is some swing to actually give it a bit more, a bit more groove. So um, we can do that very easily using push. If I hold down quantize and just add some swing, let's put it to 26%. Hit quantize. There you go. Sounds much better. So as you can see, we've taken those elements, we've chopped up the beat, and uh, we've, now got, we've now programmed in that beat ourselves. And uh, if we just play along with the metronome, you can hear it's perfectly in time, which is cool. So let's just do a bit of processing to this. Um, I think one, one um, very common technique with uh, these kind of break beats, especially in hip hop, is actually to give it some energy by compressing it. So uh, let's put some compression on. Uh, I've got an Apollo Twin here, so, which is made by uh, UAD, uh, Universal Audio. And uh, I'm going to use the UAD LA-2A classic compressor. Now, if I, press, if I uh, play it now and just dial in some of the peak reduction, So you can hear it's kind of pumping. It's got a lot more energy. If I take it off and turn it on, hopefully you can hear that. Don't have to use the, the UAD one. We could use the compressor inside Ableton. But as I'm using the interface, I thought I'd, uh, I'd use that. Um, let's put some uh, EQ on it to boost some of the frequencies. Uh, I'm going to use the Ableton EQ8 for this. And uh, let's put some. Low end, a bit more low end. Let's around 220 hertz. And then some high mid as well. Maybe around here. 2.8 kilohertz. You can see we've got a nice suspension bridge there. So you can see that you can really hear the difference. It's kind of bringing out some of that bottom end and also making that snare, giving that snare a bit more of a kind of crack. Great, so that's good. There's more we can do with this beat. <laughs> um, what's uh, a very common technique as well is to do some um, parallel processing. So this essentially is like uh, using a return to add some effects. But in Ableton, uh, we can actually do this on a separate track, which can have its own uses. So I'm going to create a new audio track here. And um, I'm going to set the audio in from this channel here, the one that's just next to it, adjacent to it. Uh, and I'm going to set it to pre-effects. So basically, that means it's taking that audio, but not after the compression EQ we've put on. It's going to take that raw audio before any processing has been done. Um, then I just need to hit monitor in. And if I just mute the original drum track now, you can hear that's coming in. So we've now got a fresh new track that we can put some, put some processing on. So I'm going to um, start off by putting a bit of overdrive on this, a bit of distortion. Uh, this kind of comes from um, like a guitar pedal, basically, an overdrive guitar pedal, that kind of effect. So let's just um, put some of that on now. Uh, let's just whack up the tone. You can hear that giving it a nice bit of distortion. Take the dynamics down. Put the dry wet value full on. If we compare it to the original beat now. So there's more things we can do as well. Uh, we could put some auto filter to actually give the beat a bit of variation. So, so if I use this LFO amount here, can change the rate. So that's quite extreme. But if we mix that underneath the original beat, it just gives a bit more energy and a bit more variation. So let's keep it like that. Let's try some more. We could put a bit of chorus on to widen it out. And we could even go a bit crazy and add some reverb as well.
OK, so we've got a brand new track now. And then if I just take that volume level down and play the original, we can just mix that one in underneath. So from that original sample uh, of the original track, we've actually got, we've done a lot of processing now, and uh, it's really got a lot of energy. So um, what I'm going to do is just take the level of those two uh, down a bit, because we're then going to work on the next sample, which is the Bjork one. OK, so I'm going to create a new instrument track, uh, and I'm going to use uh, one of the uh, Ableton devices, which is the Simpler. There are two sampling devices in Ableton. There's Sampler and Simpler. Simpler deals with just one sample at a time. Sampler allows you to have multiple samples, which you can then layer up or um, put into different key groups. Um, so let's just drag this Simpler over here. And let's go back to our samples. And we're going to find, yeah, this possibly maybe um, audio file here. And I'm just going to drag that down onto the Simpler there. Uh, and let's just open this up so you can see what's going on. Um, push is great. Push 2 is fantastic because we can actually see the waveform on here. So we can actually do our audio editing on push now. It's great because it, it just takes you away from looking at the screen and being in that environment and starts allowing you to uh, use your ears a bit more. So let's just um, find something that we can actually use uh, from, this, from this sample. <laughs> So you can hear I'm just playing it now. I'm just zooming in. So you can hear that there's this interesting kind of weird synth noise that's going underneath that. Um, we want to try to avoid hearing that. So I think the second time round, probably there's less of it. This is the first one. So there, there it is. So let's just go from the start of that. Let's just keep zooming in and just take the end point. Zoom in a bit more so we get a good start point. OK. And you can hear that synth noise comes in uh, halfway through that. If we can actually um, eliminate that so we can take the end point so we avoid that and then just loop round that last chord, then we can actually kind of uh, use it and hold, that, hold this down in the same way that DJ Shadow did. There we go. OK, so what we can do now uh, is just turn looping on. And then we can just actually create a loop for the last section of this riff. So you can hear where it's looping there, but what one of the features I love is this fade. So that's working really nicely. Um, so he actually transposed it down two semitones probably to get it in time with the beat. So this is actually what it sounds like. Um, so let's just play that now uh, alongside the beat. And you'll hear how it sounds. Let's look at the envelope, just give it a bit more release. So let's record that in. Uh, I'm just going to turn the metronome down a bit because it's uh, very loud. There we go. So that's sounding nice. Um, we can do a bit of processing on this, audio processing. Um, certainly, we can look at some EQ to maybe bring out some of those the uh, mid frequencies. Maybe around eight, nine hundred hertz could be nice. We can widen it as well, put some chorus on it. 
And this is really from me just listening to that track and listening to what he might have put on it. I don't know exactly what processing he was doing it. Obviously, it was probably, well, it was probably going through an analog desk with actual outboard equipment. Um, but this is, yeah, this is sort of what, what I was hearing when I was uh, listening to it. Uh, and finally, we can put some delay. Let's put some ping pong delay on. Let's just put the one, the beat division of one. Take the feedback down. OK, and let's bring it back in now. So we've now got two sections. We've got the uh, intro section. So let's just take a level of this track down and play this now. So we can start building up these different sections of the arrangement using scenes in Ableton. So I'm going to duplicate that scene there, and we're going to look at this next sample, the Ron Giesen um, one, uh, and actually start just loop that round as well so we can put that in. So I'm going to find a simpler again. I'm going to put that in, and let's just uh, find that sample here. There we go, more than seven dwarfs in penis land. Let's drag that on. There we go, and we can work in here again. And actually, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the gain. Because it's very quiet at the start. OK, so let's uh, again just find, find a good section of that we can use. Let's just take the end point there. OK. He actually played it two semitones down. So I'm going to. So let's play that along with the track now. Um... Let's record that in. Now you can see from this metering that it's quite it's weighted to the left hand side. So we can actually um, look at that and do something about that. If I use the utility plugin in Ableton, we can just we can decrease the stereo width of that and then slightly pan it over to the right hand side as well. OK, so we've got that section. Let's just keep pushing forward. Um, the next section of the track is just the beat on its, by itself. So we can just drag that onto a new scene. Um, and then the beat comes out, and uh, we have this record deck stop effect. Um, that's basically when you're playing a record, and you just hit stop on an, on an SL1200, and you get a kind of, kind of sound. Now, we can re recreate that in, in uh, Ableton very easily. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, so let's just find uh, the original drum beat. And I'm going to drag that just onto an audio track into a clip. Uh, I'm going to warp it again. And we're just going to use the first beat here. So I'm just going to set 1.1 there and just play that so you can hear it. Let's just uh, solo. Yeah, so just that first kick. So let's just drag the end point right back here. So we, all we're going to have is just that beat there. There we go. So we've just got that. And uh, if I open this out, and then I can, I can do this using the clip envelope. So if I select transposition modulation, uh, and then just drag this up here, there we go, and then just put another point there, drag that right down. And then play, and you can hear. There we go. It sounds like a sort of laser effect or something. Uh, great. So, um, and to make it even more interesting, we can uh, add some delay to that. So let's just put some ping pong delay. Um, let's just take the dry wet value down and the feedback. 
and then just play that. There we go. So, and let's just take solo off. So you can hear what it's like going from the section before. There we go. I mean, it's a fantastic technique, and um, you know the fact it's like it's a sound design technique essentially, because just from just from that uh, beat, we've just created a whole new sound, which is fantastic. Um, so let's keep moving on. Now the next section is where. Uh, we have some vocals, and like I said before, this was his then girlfriend Lisa. He recorded some vocals um, up in his attic, I think, and um, they're very, very close mics and really kind of got a really beautiful sound. Um, I've actually put these already into a drum rack, uh, so let's just uh, load that up, and you can hear what that sounds like. There we go, and I'll just take the effects off for the moment, and I'll put them on so you can hear what they sound like. I was scared, I have to admit at first. Never had a cat before. Do you feel like Darth Vader? Do you feel like Darth Vader? <laughs> and I'm Princess Leia. I mean, kind of genius how well they work with the track. What I've put, I've put some compression on this just to um, make sure that all the words come out. I was scared, I have to admit at first. And also some ping pong I've delay as well. Never had a cat before. And let's just listen to what that sounds like uh, with that Bjork sample. I was scared, I have to admit at first. Never had a cat before. Do you feel like Darth Vader? So let's record that in. I was scared, I have to admit at first. Never had a cat before. Do you feel like Darth Vader? And I'm Princess Leia. I was scared, I have to admit at first. Never had a cat before. There we go. Now, alongside that, um, he also used a cello. I think what was a cello sample. Um, I haven't got that sample, but I thought that we'd actually look at playing that in. So I've got a Native Instruments. Um, it's the type from the factory library, stock cello sound. Now, this track, just a little bit of music theory, this track is in, is in A major. So these are the notes of A major. It's got uh, three sharps, <coughs> C sharp, F sharp, and G sharp. Now, essentially, a major scale is, is very happy sounding. But uh, what's happening here, if we, if we play the riff, we've got this note here, which is a seventh. And it makes this chord, which is an A major seventh. And there's a real melancholy sound to that particular chord. Now, the part that goes along with this is just playing the seventh note of that scale and the fifth note, the G sharp and the E. I was scared, I have to admit at first. So let's record that in. I was scared, I have to admit at first. Great, so we're nearly there. We've just got one more sample to put in, um, which we're going to put in now. And for that, I'm going to just create a, another um, simpler track. So let's just find that. Here we go, there's simpler. And this sample is a vibes and a flute sound together, and I'm going to play that to you now. So originally they were separated, and this is something that he talked about uh, in that song, in the Song Exploder podcast. So let's just uh, turn that down a little bit, and then just play that along with the loop. I was scared, I have to admit at first. I've never had a cat before. Do you feel like Darth Vader? <laughs> and I'm... Record it in. And just quickly, just to talk about that, the notes of that. Mm -hmm. 
Now, these notes, you can hear there's a bit of a clash between uh, the A major and this. And what the notes that are playing from here are actually in B major, which is a tone above A major. So we get these notes clashing and these notes clashing. But in true kind of hip hop sample style, they sound really good. OK, so we've. I mean, there are other elements that are in this track, but uh, um, unfortunately, I haven't got enough time to do everything. But we've got the main core elements of this track. And this is literally just from taking those original tracks and manipulating them and uh, recreating uh, how uh, he would have done it, DJ Shadow. And now, just popping over to Session View, I can actually trigger these different scenes, and we can play this track. So let's just have a quick play through. I was scared, I have to admit it first. Never had a you need to put the Bjork sample in there, don't mind. <laughs> So there we have Mutual Slump uh, by DJ Shadow. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, yeah, I'll be hanging around today if you want to have a chat. Thank you very much indeed.